Hello and welcome to Crusader Kings 3. I have been really looking forward to this. I'm a huge CK2 player, so coming into this one, I felt like the best thing to do was to play the most standard, the most iconic Crusader Kings 2 start there is, when I'm hoping Crusader Kings 3 start, and we are in 1066. We're in England. From the south, the Normans attack. From the east, we're being attacked by the Norwegians. And we are down here in Shropshire. We are the Earl of Shropshire. We are Earl Edric Elfrickson. And, well, we really just want to survive. We're in a very, very bad spot right now because, well, our liege is about to lose a couple of wars. He's going to lose these badly. We have this war here where he's being attacked. So this is the Norwegian war. He's being attacked by about 5,000 troops. He has a little bit more. He has about 5,300. But, you know, in of itself, no problem. The problem is he's also being attacked by the Normans. If we have a look at the Normans, they also have around 5,000 troops. And our leash is 5,300. I think you can see where the issues are going to come here. Because there's actually 10,000 people attacking my liege. And we're just down here in Shropshire. Uh, just panicking in the corner. However, we've got some positives. One of the positives, we have two children. Um, we have a son. So that should be great. He's 11 years old, so should be looking to get married in a couple of years. So then we can uh, hopefully get our line to continue. And we also have our daughter here, who's a little bit younger, but potentially could be married off for an alliance. Now, I just want to double check our house, which has the words courage, learning, and nobility. Um, we don't have a lot of splendor with it, but and only, only has three living members. So I assume that we are head of the house. Yes, we're the dynasty head and the house head. These are new mechanics within the game. So Dynasty Head basically allows you to do all sorts of things. It allows you to denounce and forgive members of your dynasty. Allows you to claim titles. Allows you to uh, make other members end wars. None of these really matter because the only two other members who are alive are my children. So they're pretty much going to do what we tell them anyway. Um, and House Head has even less kind of benefits. It allows you to have... It gives you automatic hooks on your family members. Hooks are basically favors from Crusader Kings 2. So they allow you to say like, um, you want to get someone married, you can use a hook to force them to agree to it or to convince them to agree to it. So they're a little bit better than favors, but we'll get into that. Also gives you prestige and renown and things, but we don't need to worry about any of that because once again, we only have three living members. So what's up with Edric? Who is he? Well, he's wrathful, he's brave, and he's ambitious. And I believe that... Now, if I get anything wrong, please do tell me, as I'm still learning the game as I'm playing it here. I believe that you get three major traits and as many minor traits as you want. Um, but basically, the major traits are what define your entire personality. So wrathful, we get more martial, lower diplomacy, lower intrigue, and then natural dread goes up. So dread's a new mechanic, which I'm not 100% sure about, but we'll find it whenever we find dread somewhere. But just from context, you can see that dread's probably something that makes people fear you. Brave, so brave gets us martial, it gets us prowess, which I believe is effectively combat ability. Attraction opinion, so the other sex or homosexual people would like us. Vassal opinion is up. Likelihood of dying in battle goes up by a hundred percent. Okay, so you're more likely to do stupid things in battle because you're brave. You're like, I've got to go for it. Okay, that's interesting. And then we're ambitious. So ambitious is still stats up across the board, but it also raises your stress. Now stress is a new mechanic, and I believe that stress works um, off of you doing things that aren't towards your three traits. So, for instance. If we were in battle and we did a craven action, so say we're in battle and we ran away, I imagine that would raise our stress because, well, that's not towards our personality. So that's kind of where I feel stress it comes in, but I haven't tried it out a lot yet. We're also a tough soldier, so we get some flat martial bonus there. And we're an unyielding defender, so friendly fatal casualties are down 25%. Okay, so that's all good. Um, so we basically have a ton of martial right now. What do these all do? So general opinion goes down for our diplomacy because it's a little bit low. So we want to try and get that up potentially. Um, our martial is quite high, which is nice. So potentially if we wanted to go to war with someone, that's something we could do. Stewardship's kind of neutral. Okay. Uh, intrigue, again, kind of neutral. Schemes work a little bit differently in this game, but we'll get into that if we need to get into that. 
And then we have very poor learning, which gets us not very much piety per month. And then I have no idea how our prowess is. Um, I don't know what scale it's on. If it's on the same scale as personal combat, then we're okay. But I'm not 100% sure. We'll get all into that later. Let's have a look at some of these things. So no heir of our dynasty. Well, that doesn't seem right because I have a child. So, uh-oh, it seems that you have no, no heir of your dynasty. If you die now, the game will end. Okay, so I believe that's because I need to declare my heir. I could be wrong. What's my succession law? Male preference. So men take women uh, precedence over women. Okay. And then partition. So under uh, partition succession, your titles will divide, be divided equally amongst your children. Okay, so it should be going to him. So I'm assuming that that's just incorrect right now. And if we unpause the game, it would probably fix. That's my guess. Could be wrong. Advice. Education. Your heir won't become a great ruler without education. Well, they need a guardian. Okay. So we need to find a highly skilled person to educate someone. Someone of a high education trait. Well, let's do that. Child, uh, I would like to educate you. What, what, what are you doing? Do we have a like an education thing for you? Like a focus? Or it doesn't appear like you have a focus, which is interesting. Uh, we could educate him, I suppose. What's our education trait like? Uh, do we have an education trait? Um, maybe it's tough soldier? Yeah, so we're level 2 there. Okay, cool. So we're going to find somebody who's better than us. So we're going to change us from being the guardian. Uh, and then we're going to find somebody who's got like... Um, a couple of stars next to their name, like a uh, astute intellectual, I assume is good at learning. Okay, so that's learning education. What are you, steward? Elusive shadow, so that's an intrigue education. We have our chancellor here, who is a mastermind uh, philosopher, so I assume that's once again a learning education. We then have astute intellectual, so really we're not getting a lot of great options here. I might let our knight educate him. What's our knight? Honest, paranoid, and ambitious. Interesting. Also melancholic, lisping. You know what? We might educate our child. I think I think on second thoughts we're gonna educate our child. Are we already educating him? How would I tell? It doesn't tell me. So let me see. If I go educate child by myself. Okay, and ward. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Next one. No lifestyle chosen. What lifestyle are we going? Well, I imagine that we're gonna have to do some martial, because we are in a very uh, precarious situation. So what we're going to do here is we can choose strategy, which gives us martial uh, right up front, and then martial experience per month. And they all seem to give the same experience per month. Okay, we're actually already down a little bit in Gallant by the looks of it. Um, okay, so we got Stalwart Leader, which gives us some prowess. We got Courtship, which gets us Romance Scheme and Elope Scheme. Okay, Knight Effectiveness is up, and then... Uh, friendly Fatal Casualties is down, along with Advantage going up. Advantage is basically the new thing when you're in battle. It will choose you whether you're going to win a battle or not is based on Advantage. Advantage can be things like, you're crossing a river, minus 10 Advantage. But your commander is really good, plus 10 Advantage. And then all of those get added in, and then eventually it comes out as a dice roll at the end. So that's kind of what that is. So we go Kingsguard, which unlocks the number of knights. If I keep going down here, if it will... Remove that. There we go. Peace acceptance goes up, so they're more likely to make peace with us. And then what's the last one? If I can see it. There we go. Gallant. You gain the trait Gallant, which is mar uh, martial and prowess and prestige and attraction appeal. Okay, so I think we're going to go that way. Yeah. So would that be a chivalry focus or do I... Are these separate? I think these might be separate. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's be... Um... Let's be on... Oh, although this one gives us Dread Drain, and we already have some natural dread. Let's take Authority Focus, sure. Yeah, sure, I'll select that. I don't know whether that locks us into a path, but that's all right. We've taken it now, so we will back out. Okay, three issues. Now, issues, I believe, are kind of... Here's the things you need to look at. So, Fabricate Claim. It thinks we should fabricate a claim on Warwickshire, because it's rich and prosperous, and I cannot conquer it without a Cassus Belly. Well, that seems about right. So, let's have a look. So, Warwickshire, which is right next door. So, how strong are they? The current ruler is this guy. The current ruler has about 300 troops. Uh, we had about 500 troops, I believe. If I go back to us here. Uh, if we go back to us here. We have about 500 troops, so we do have more. 
So it would seem like that's a good idea. Okay. If the game hasn't just crashed, which I believe that it has. Oh no. Not good. Oh, there we go. We're back. Okay. Fabricate claim. Not a great sign that the game is crashing, but that's okay. I haven't seen many other... I did swatch a little gameplay of this, so I haven't seen anyone crashing yet. So we claim a Bishop Rick. Or, uh, or can we claim the Earldom? Which one are we going to go... How would we do this? Or is it just telling... It's just telling us about Warwickshire. Okay. So what I actually want to do is go to my realm... Not realm. Uh, council? Court? Council? Something like that? Uh, and... Oh, council. There we go. And then find our... I think it's our... Uh, where is it? Yeah, I think it's you now. And you can fabricate claims. Perfect. So as I don't believe it's on the chance, so I believe it's now on this one. Uh, yes, I believe that is correct. Right, we're going to go fabricate a claim on Warwickshire. We're going to claim the closer one here. There we go. So we'll do a little claim and see how it goes. So it says it's going to take 19 months. Oh, that's, that's very different than uh, CK2. So that's just saying it will happen in 19 months. That's cool. Um, is collect taxes still the OP one? Well, we can increase development. So development of a holding, I believe, increases a whole bunch of things with it. Um, I might get you to just collect taxes for just now, which I believe is n not on a particular holding. Okay, that's fine. Foreign affairs. So we get prestige per month. Fellow vassal opinion goes up. Okay, that's fine. Uh, or we can go domestic affairs, which increases our vassal's opinion of us. Now, because we're pretty low down, we don't have many vassals, so that's not really important. Spy master. We can disrupt other people's schemes, we can support our own schemes, or we can find secrets. Hmm. And secrets, I believe, can allow you to unlock hooks, which might be useful. Um, we'll leave that for... Well, does this have to be on this particular holding? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, well, let's see here. So is this my, this is my lieges one. Uh, your liege penalty to progress. Okay, we're gonna send you over here to try and get secret on our liege. We'll see what we can do. It's gonna be seven months apparently it's gonna take. And our marshal here, train commanders, that gives us the men at arms made sense. Men at arms are apparently similar to retinue except that you um, raise them up in, well yeah, like they're your, they're your best troops. And you have them ready, but you then kind of raise them up when you need them. So we can lower their cost. Okay. Or we can organize our levies, which allows us to get, get levy size and garrison size uh, increased. Okay. But this can also make your commanders better as well. I'm going to get you to train commanders for just now. Yeah. Which will also lower our men at arms cost, if we happen to have one. So we're not endorsed by our suffragan bishop. Okay, so what does that do? Realm priests with a low opinion of their liege will not provide them with any taxes or levies. Oh, that sounds bad. What can we do to fix it? Uh, I'm assuming it's because you don't like us. Yes. How can we make you like us? We can try and uh, sway him. We can scheme against him. We could also kill him and get someone new. Let's sway him. Let's try and get him to like us. Okay. If scheme is successful, his opinion of us will increase by 25. And it's expected to take around 16 months. Okay, sure. Start that scheme. That seems good to me. And then, once it gets off the screen, I would like it if you could move the tooltips a little bit quicker. If I click it, does it go away? Nope. Okay, you just have to kind of wait for it. That's all right. Um, activate election in Kingdom of England. There is an on oh, no, sorry, there is an active election in the Kingdom of England. There is ongoing election. A title uh, ruled by King Harold II. Currently, the leading candidate is Duke Gerth Godwinson of East Anglia. If you're an elector, it's worthwhile to keep a tab on active elections. Okay, so I assume that means that England is working off of elective as its succession law. Then, oh, it's working off this as the same succession law that we have. Um, where are we at? Uh, so no, it says uh, Saxon elective. Okay, there we go. Um, the ruler and all direct adult azure vassals of one or two ranks below the title can nominate an heir of the most powerful vassal among them. Okay, that's fine. So we will, uh, yeah, we'll look at that if we need to. So do we have this? What what is ours? So ours is straight up partition. Okay, so ours will be divided amongst our children. So we should be fine there. Right. Uh, I'm going to slow the game down, and then we're going to run forward. If there's anything that I've missed so far, please let me know, because I'm very interested to find out. Wedding celebration. With my marriage to Countess uh, Whitborough, 
I didn't know that we were recently married, but that's okay. Um, the realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It's well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. So, I can get some extra money, or I can get some prestige. Okay, and we would be moving towards fame. Fame is kind of like permanent prestige tiers. So previously prestige worked in that you would have prestige, you could use prestige, and it would go and buy, you could buy things with it and it would lower your prestige. What happens now is it works in the same way, but there's also another layer on top of it where your opinion from prestige is permanent. Um, I think I'm just going to get the money. 75 seems like quite a large portion of the amount that we have. Commander promoted. My marshal, Reeve Balthra, has been showing off a promising recruit, or a new recruit. He may not be as, of as noble stock as you, my liege, but on my name I swear that Wolfra is someone you would want on your side. So we can recruit him to our court or make him leave. Well, is he any good? It seems to suggest that we could hover over that, but okay, let's go there. He seems to be pretty good. He's impatient, compassionate, and brave. Yeah, you know what? You can serve me. That seems good to me. Right, leave it unpaused for a second or two. Uh, I'm still not entirely sure how to keep a track of our liege's wars, but I'm sure that we will see no in no time flat when these move along. Now, I can make it run at speed 5, but as you'll see here, if you run at speed 5, the game runs very, very quickly. Alright, so there's our liege in the Battle of Scarborough. Can we watch this battle? Yes, we can. So, our liege has four knights. Knights are basically like your best troops. Um, he has seven knights on the other side. Our liege has less troops. They have more troops. They're both elite quality. Quality gauges the power of an army relative to its number of soldiers. Okay, so an army that contains knights and men-at-arms will be of high quality, while an army containing a large number of levies will be lower quality. Fair enough. Um, okay, I'm just double-checking this. Yeah, okay, so that, that is directly the number here. I was checking that wasn't like a power value. Okay. And then we got commander advantage on each side. So their commander is worse than the commander on our guy's side. So I still think it should be a win for the Norwegians, which it appears to be. Yep, Norwegians have won it very straightforward, but that's okay. Um, your liege has passed limited crown authority, uh, or has passed the law limited crown authority. Rulers can change between available partition succession laws. So if I go to my succession law, how would I do that? I would go to my title, and then maybe click on that. Nope. Okay, I can see the line of succession. Would it go to... I might look at this off camera if I can't find it soon. Uh, I cannot seem to find it immediately, so we'll leave that. Ah, yes, we did also have a position open, I believe, on our council somewhere. Or in our court, for a court physician. So, we could search for a physician. And that will mean uh, that the decision will be gone for 12 months. Sure. Go and search for a physician. We'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, I'm still not entirely sure what that's going to be, but I will look for it off camera between episodes. It is a new game, so I am still learning. Court Physician. This world is full of dangers, even to an earl in his court. As per my request, my servants have inquired after recommendations. Now they've assembled a few options before them. Okay, so we have um, Leof Gifu, who is quite experienced. Okay. And I'm assuming it's related to their learning stats still. I don't see anything else. So you're a schemer as well. Okay. Or we have Wolfhelm. And Wolfhelm uh, has less of the learning. And he's craven and stubborn. Okay, we're going to go with her. Yeah, it costs us 50 gold. It's quite expensive, really. But um, I guess we'll pay it. Okay. In enemy territory. A war is determined by its battles, but battles are determined by their preparations. Being caught without a plan or direction is a good way to lose. Okay, so what I can do is I can get the trait uh, logisti Logistician, which gets a supply duration. Military Engineer. See, this one let me move across to get it, but maybe I'm moving too quickly or too slowly. Hmm. Not entirely sure how you're meant to do that. That's okay. Yeah, so... There must be a, a spot here where you can move over, but it seems a little odd. Some of their tooltip stuff, I think, could use work. And Forder, I believe, is... Go this must be going over rivers. This must be sieging, and this one is supply, as we already found out. Let's take Forder. Sure. Let's see. Was it something to do with going over rivers? 
Uh, it was indeed. Cross water with uh, without advantage penalties, yes. Oh, okay, so we can... This just take, takes away any negative from going across water. That's cool. Um, we also have a sinful uh, Prince Archbishop exposed. Okay, and there's a new faction against Duke Edwin. So is this my liege? Your acquaintance Earl Edgar has created the Liberty faction against Duke Edwin. So it seeks to lower crown authority, but members are otherwise loyal to the rem realm. Uh, and that'll be Duke Edwin, my liege, I believe. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. We might join a faction or create one next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, all that sort of stuff. It helps the channel grow and it helps the series grow. And hopefully, we'll all have fun learning this game together. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.